So I've come to the conclusion that I will only script my videos during the specs part. Besides that, it's all going to be, well, freestyle. So yeah. Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're reviewing the Acer Spire 9500, specifically the 9504 EWSMI. I got my hands on this laptop through eBay from seller Seattle Laptop. This laptop is interesting as it's one of only a handful in existence still in fully working order and not recycled. This laptop was intended for the North American market but it flopped due to the laptop launching at the same time as Windows Vista. Another issue was that it was underpowered, sporting a sluggish Intel Celeron M380. The laptop continued to be sold alongside Acer's more powerful up-to-date 17-inch laptops with Windows Vista. It was sold with Windows XP Media Center Edition until 2008, when Acer put their act together and ended its production. While this laptop flop flopped everywhere in the world, its twin, the Aspire 1800, didn't. At least outside of North America. It had a big media buttons instead of a useless mirror that says Aspire 9500 in large text. One good thing about this laptop is that it had a designated door to access the GPU. I'm guessing the idea was to make it more upgradable since the GPU is distanced far enough from the CPU. It fixes the biggest problem that even new 17 inch laptops still have to this day which is lines on the screen and overheating. Every single other 17 inch laptop places the GPU and CPU next to each other and then the manufacturers decided to make them share the same freaking cooling system. So this is why the machine is so special. It was well engineered. Clearly, Acer went out of their way to fix the infamous issue. And then proceeded to do the same with the other manufacturers. So while this machine is in rough shape, even missing the DVD drive bezel, it still makes up for it in other ways. Actually, it would be nice if you guys could help me find the replacement bezel. So now let's dive into the specs. This laptop comes standard with an Intel Celeron M380 with a clock speed of 1.6 GHz. This laptop comes standard with 512 MB of DDR2 memory, but the motherboard supports up to 2 GB. This laptop features a slot loading DVD-RW plus RDL, and mine is missing the bezel. Please help me find a replacement. This laptop comes with a widescreen, 24-bit, 17-inch, 1440x900WXGA screen. This laptop comes with stereo speakers, a subwoofer, and two microphones for clear sound. This laptop comes with an Intel Pro slash wireless 2200 BG wireless card. This laptop features a five card super combo, whose supported cards include Memory Stick Pro, MMC slash multimedia cards, SD cards, and picture cards. The bloatware that this came with but not installed on mine include Acer Arcade 2.0, Acer Empowering Technology, Acer Grid Vista 2.0, Acer Launch Manager, Adobe Reader, Bluetooth Profile, NTI CD Maker, and Norton Antivirus. Now, let's get to the ports. On the back, we have the DC Jack, VGA Out, S Video Out, a parallel port, Ethernet, phone, USB 1.1 and the Kensington lock. On the left, we have USB 2.0, express card, a headphone jack, a subwoofer jack, a microphone jack, USB 2.0, and a slot loading super combo drive. On the front, we have nothing, so on the right, we have PC MCIA, the super combo card reader, an IR sensor, IEEE 1394 digital, and two USB 2.0 ports. Now let's get to the test. By the way, this is the Acer Spire 1800, it's twin. Alright, so here it is. The Aspire 9500, so yeah. I'm going to uh, test it out. So, one thing, oh shit. That's blood. Alright, but blood aside. This is the Aspire 9500. It's extremely rare. And I finally own it. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to, re to finally test it out. And yeah. 
So you can see there are two buttons here, one for Bluetooth and one for wireless. Although that one's a little vague and counterintuitive because it looks like a like a satellite dish. And we're, we're really used to um, seeing some like weird abstract thing. But hey, it, it gets the job done. So I'm going to review this thing. So anyway, let's open it up. All right, so before I open it up, I want to point out something. It says here, Invalink Signal Up. I don't know what the hell that is, and if any of you guys could clarify this for me, I would greatly appreciate it. But anyway, it opens right up as expected. And it looks really good. As you can see, it still has the original stickers. It says Celeron M and designed for Windows XP. Now, there is wear on the, here, but there isn't on here or here or here. So that's kind of weird. So I guess they just did a lot of left clicking on this computer, whoever owned it before. So it doesn't really matter, but still, that's a pretty interesting thing to point out. Of course, the old Acer logo is a bit different than the new one. It's kind of more funky looking. I don't know how to explain it. But not only does it say Aspire 9500 in huge text here, it says it in small text over here. Now the reason this is because on the 1800 and the higher end 9500, which never made it to the American market, um, there were media buttons here and then the, the thing that showed the track of the DVD, the, the CD. So it would display the track. So that was, it kind of was like a mini um, CD player controls here. So they just managed to put this weird ass mirror on here and uh, I don't know why. It's kind of stupid and tacky but it it's all right it works. Now, I'm using the charger from my Acer Aspire 5 which is my current uh gaming machine and well yeah, it works on here. So that means Acer has been using the same exact connector for over a decade. Now that is dedication to one format, if I've ever heard it. Anyways, it lists some of the specs here, but they're not good enough. And here it just shows you all, about all the bullshit stuff that they want you to think it's cool. But this thing is actually pretty cool. So you got some contrast. Here you got like a silver, nice smooth thing, but here you got a ragged thing that just feels well, it feels, that's all I can say. And then you got some default Windows controls here, and then an E button, probably for an Acer bloatware app. There's the post logo. All right, so we're in. And it looks pretty good so far. So that is the original wallpaper that came with this thing. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So we're going to run a few things and test some things out here and there. Oh, and here's a neat little quirk. I've mentioned two microphones, but what I meant is that there's one microphone here and one microphone there. And it makes it clear unto you that it's there and there because it has the icon for the microphone that they use here and there. So yeah, you can pretty much tell where this is going. They really wanted to make this a portable HTPC. Now an HTPC is a home theater personal computer. Now you're supposed to put in your living room and it can use all kinds of media formats that are so cool and stuff. But yeah, they try to make a portable one and I think that the execution worked. So anyway, we're gonna run a few apps. And then we're going to see just how good this thing does stuff. Alright, we're going to start with Mario Kart 64. Going to mute, mute the audio so that the video doesn't get taken down. Because Nintendo doesn't like people recording Mario Kart 64. Okay, so now we can full screen it. And it looks great, just like the real thing. Uh, 
obviously gonna play as Luigi because he's the man. Okay, I guess we'll do the flower cup. Yeah, it's running just like it does on the Nintendo 64, accurately. Wow, the fans just turned off, and this thing's running smoothly. That's impressive. Dang! How did I miss the freaking... Eh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, there's really no slowdowns at all. It's running really smoothly. Wow, the AI fell, failed to um, do the banana peel on me, but I hit into a car, which is way worse. This is useless. Bam. 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 And of course the AI cheats because when you're too far ahead, they speed up. That's right, Toad. I'm eating your kind. Wait, the person in first place is way ahead? How? What? I slipped on nothing. This is easy. What? What the hell just happened? What? No! No! No, 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 no. I'm not having any of that crap today. But yeah, as you can see, it runs really smoothly on here. Alright, now let's do Sonic Robo Blast 2, which I always do in my reviews. Okay. This one's running pretty smoothly, except with some, some uh, frame skipping. The game's not slowing down, there's just frame skipping, and that happened. Yeah, as you can see, it's working quite well. So, I'm gonna quit the game, because yet again, I'm in an uncomfortable position. We have um, Sonic 3D, the fan game, made by the Russian dude. Okay, so it's running really smooth. Actually, arguably smoother than Sonic Robo Blast 2, which is kind of weird because usually Sonic Robo Blast 2 runs smoother. So, this is kind of a strange anomaly. Huh, it didn't teleport me, that's weird. Okay, okay, and the lag begins. Okay, that was easy. Too late. That didn't count as a hit. Well, that- I barely made it on that one. Whoa. Two more hits and I'm done. Whoa. There we go. That was easy. So as you can see, that ran pretty smoothly, so now let's quit the game. Alright, so, 
But yeah, that worked out pretty nicely. Um, now, last and also not least, uh, let's go to Firefox. Oh no, I forgot how slow Celeron is. Okay, so now we're at my channel. Didn't take too long to load. I mean, it was definitely slower than Pentium 4. But, eh, it's good enough. By the way, I'm scrolling using that uh, D-pad in between the left mouse button and the right mouse button. And it's really solid. This thing has a ton of delays and glitches unless we set it to 144p. And we have to take it off of auto to reduce the glitches even more. Don't even try to full screen this. Oh, that too. So yeah. The speakers are quiet right now, but they can get uh, louder. Plus this even has a subwoofer, so it's a pretty pleasant experience. So as you can see, playback is a uh, very uh, mild at about 144p. Don't even dare putting it at full screen. So yeah, it's kind of bad. One cool thing is that when you close tabs, it kind of slides down to close. So yeah, that was really all I wanted to show you guys. So... Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.